Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make um, chicken cutlets. What I do is I start off with a whole chicken breast, then cut it in half, butterfly it, and then cut each half in half so you have a quarter. Put it between a sandwich bag, pound it up just a little, not too much, you don't want to get it too thin, and you end up with a, something that looks like this. So you do that first. Next, you're going to set up your breading station. Your breading station consists of seasoned flour, which you just gauge the amount of flour you need by how many pieces of chicken you're going to be breading. So this is about probably about two cups. So to that, we're going to add about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of garlic salt. I'd say half a teaspoon for two cups. Half a teaspoon of onion powder. And probably a full teaspoon of regular sweet paprika. And then season well with salt, maybe two teaspoons of salt. And then about a full teaspoon of fresh brown pepper. Get that all in there. Now you're gonna just mix it with your fork. Get it all combined. So you don't have too much of one seasoning in one area. So flour. The next one is gonna be eggs. So for the amount of flour that I have, I used four whole eggs, added about a quarter cup of water, and then repeat it with the seasonings. Sprinkle or shake of paprika. garlic powder. This is probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of the seasonings to the egg mixture. And then you're just going to eat. That's your egg mixture. The next one is your breadcrumbs. So you use equal parts of Italian seasoned breadcrumbs and panko. And to that mixture, you're going to add about, for this amount, about a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. So your breading station is all ready. Now just go ahead and with your fingers, combine the cheese into the crumbs so that the crumbs are all covering the cheese. The order in which it goes is flour first, eggs next, and breadcrumbs last. So you kind of set it up so that it's comfortable for you. And so I like to use these. I don't like to get my hands all full of breadcrumbs and there's a technique that I use. Take the first piece of chicken, flip it into the flour, both sides, make sure everything gets coated and then give it a good little shake. Dip it into the egg mixture, then into the breadcrumbs. And here's what I do. I kind of just pull some of the breadcrumbs from the sides up to the top so I don't get any egg mixture on my hands and then press down and then I can flip it over without it sticking to my hands. So that's what it kind of looks like. Make sure you shake it off. You don't want too much of that flour to stick onto it. Into the egg mixture, into the flour mixture, and the breadcrumb mixture, and again, Push that over on top, 
and that way your hands don't get all sticky. So I put everything on a cookie sheet and I put the raw chicken on one side now. And as I'm breading, I'll put the breaded chicken on the other side. It's okay to put the pieces on top of each other if you run out of space. Okay, so we're doing the very last piece of chicken in our breading station. Make sure that the egg covers every part of it because otherwise this, the um, breadcrumbs won't stick. Again, give it a nice press so that the cheese and the breading don't stick. You can flip it over a couple of times if you want. Okay, so that's the last one. Now we have our chicken all breaded. I'm going to let it sit for about 15 20 minutes before I take it in the frying pan. Okay, our chicken cutlets are all ready to fry. You want to make sure you use a skillet that has a nice heavy bottom so that you don't get any hot spots in your oil. I put about a quarter of an inch to half an inch of oil. I brought it to uh, temperature. The way I know it's ready to use is that I take a wooden spoon, take the flat end of the wooden spoon handle, put it into the frying pan in the center, and bubbles should start forming immediately around the, the wooden spoon. That way you know your, your oil is at the right temperature for frying. You don't want to put uh, anything you're frying into cold oil, otherwise it get absorbed into your food. So you want to make sure it's at the right temperature. So I use two different sets of tongs. One to handle the raw meat, the other to handle the cooked meat. So I'll use one set of tongs to put the raw chicken in. And I try to put maybe two or three pieces in at a time. What you don't want to do is crowd the pan because that drops the temperature of the oil. So I think I have enough room for three pieces. You want to get the pieces of chicken that are as much alike in size so that they cook at the same time. So now it's going to take about six minutes total. So what you want to do is keep an eye on them, keep watching them, just watch them as they brown. So I'll just keep checking on them every couple of minutes as they, as they brown. Once they're browned, you want to have a setup for when you're frying. You want to have a cookie sheet lined with paper towels. You want to have a cooling rack, like you would use for cooking and baking. And then I put a cookie sheet underneath just to avoid any extra cleanup that I have to do. And you want to have your salt ready because you want to make sure that you salt your cutlets as soon as they come out of the pan when they're done. So I see it's starting to brown a little bit, so I'm going to keep the bottom of one of them. Yep, browning nicely. Nicely. Do what? Well. I didn't check the clock, but I've done this enough times to kind of know when it's time to turn them over. I'll take a look at the clock and give it at least three minutes, four minutes to make sure it's cooked through. And now I'll put this set of tongs down and I'll be using these to avoid contamination from the raw meat. Again, you can just give them a little peek, see how they're doing. Oh, I can tell. Two more minutes. This is why it's so important that when you're, you're pounding out the chicken breast or any meat you're using, that you try to get each piece uh, pounded out to the same thickness so that it cooks evenly. Okay, I think it should be done. Yep. Looks good, so we're going to just tap it, get this pan through with it, put it on paper towels. Tap up just a little, get some extra oil off. 
And again, it's really important that they're all about the same size. I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet lined with um, paper towels. Sprinkle a little bit of kosher salt on top. Let them sit there for a little bit. Make sure you let your oil come back up to temperature between frying. The temperature was dropped when I added those, the, those cutlets. So again, check the temperature of the oil. See that it slowed down, so bubbles should start forming immediately around the wooden handle. This is not worth it. So you wait at least a minute. You can set a timer if you want. Use your phone, it's easy to do. Let it sit for a timer and come back up to temperature. Okay, all set. Again, use the tongs if you're using for raw meat. I like to use that method for everything I cook. I don't want to use equipment that has been handled raw meat and then um, use the same thing for the finished product. Try to cut back on bacteria issues. The good thing about making these cutlets this way is that you can do them for having a party, for having them for dinner or any time. You can make them ahead of time. Um, take them out of the refrigerator or freezer, put them in the oven and they'll crisp up as if you just baked them. Yeah, this one's done, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a flip because I don't like to do that. There we go. So, off to paper towels. Then I'll take these guys, put them on the cooling rack. Don't want them to sit on the paper towel for too long, but we do want to drain them off a little. Okay, perfect. All done. Fire off. Some salt. And you're good. Okay, chicken cutlets are all done. I hope that you have enjoyed watching me and sharing this recipe with you. Um, please try it and I hope your family enjoys it. Thank you.